We want to get, though, to new battleground state polling showing Joe Biden up over President Trump in several key states, 36 days, 36 days before Election Day. But people are voting now. In Maine, the latest Colby College poll shows Biden with an 11 point lead, 50 to 39 percent. In Wisconsin, the NBC News Marist College poll shows Biden up by 10, 54 to 44 percent. In Michigan, the same poll gives Biden an eight point lead, 52 to 44 percent. In Minnesota, the USA Suffolk University poll has Biden up by seven. 47 to 40 percent, while the Star, Tribune, Care, NPR news poll has Biden up by six in the state, 48 to 42 percent. And in North Carolina, the latest CBS News YouGov poll finds Biden and President Trump in a statistical tie, 48 to Trump's 46 percent. In Georgia, the same poll shows another statistical tie, Trump 47 percent, Biden 46. And in South Carolina, the CBS News YouGov poll shows President Trump holding a 10-point lead, 52 to 42 so, percent. So, so Steve Kornacki, uh, no, no need to put the asterisk next to any of these polls anymore. Uh, it is no longer early. These are not national polls. The national polls still unmoved yesterday. A couple national polls were, I think, at 10 and at 9. So the national polls still looking the same as they have for an entire year. One of the most tumultuous years in modern American history, the one thing that's been a steady, the one thing that's been a constant, Joe Biden's been ahead by eight, nine points. In the Washington Post ABC News poll, it's a 10 point lead. But I want to zone in, Steve, because it, it is true. Generals are always fighting the last war. I guess political pundits are always looking at the last race. What have we been saying for the last three or four years? Not just you and me, but everybody. Oh, it's those white voters that Donald Trump uh, has been gaining while he's been insulting Hispanics and while he's been insulting minorities, while he's been insulting the others. Well, you look where the white guys are in Wisconsin, uh, supposedly, in Michigan, in Minnesota, and you see actually Joe Biden consolidating. Apparently, he's doing pretty well with, with voters in Wisconsin. And this is a consistency, a 10-point lead in Wisconsin. We've seen a nine-point lead. We've seen eight-point leads post-Kenosha. It hasn't been close. In Michigan, we have an eight-point lead in Michigan. In Minnesota, a seven-point lead. And yet, we, we didn't show the polls from Florida and Arizona. But where is it getting close, Steve? It's getting close in Florida and Arizona uh, in the Sun Belt in part because Biden hasn't closed the deal with Hispanics yet. So we have sort of a reversal of what everybody's been talking about. But let's talk about that industrial uh, uh, Midwest, because that's that's Donald Trump's only path to victory. What's going on up there? Yeah, it's interesting. Several things happened. They all came together for Donald Trump in 2016. One is that he ended up getting, you know, pretty much consolidating the Republican base. It helped him in a state like Georgia. You talk about a Texas and North Carolina. But the other key ingredient to Trump is what you're honing in on there. The Midwest, the northern tier of the country, really, you could draw a line. It almost starts in parts of North Dakota. It stretches down as far south as Appalachia. It goes all the way up to Maine, to northern and western Maine. And you could find town after town, county after county, where Donald Trump was running up massive numbers in places with large populations of blue collar white voters, white voters without a college degree, older white voters just running up massive margins. And all those polls you were putting up here at the start of the screen, they are consistent in this way. They represent polls that are showing significant movement among white voters and among non-college white voters in particular, which is Trump's base. To give you a couple examples from our NBC Marist polls, we took a look at Wisconsin and Michigan, two states that Trump flipped, two states that hadn't gone Republican in three decades till he got him. These are states where Trump was basically winning the blue-collar white vote by about 30 points in 2016. That was much higher than anybody thought he was going to get in 2016, about 30 points are polling right now and other polls out there. You look at other polls out there, they find the same thing. Single digits. Trump lead of single digits among non-college white voters in those states. You, are, you, could talk, you put Maine up there. Maine is part of this story. 
Why did Trump get an electoral vote out of Maine in 2016? It's because that congressional district that he won in Maine, remember Maine's one of the two states that does it, is filled with blue-collar white voters, non-college white voters. Trump ran up the score there in 2016 against Hillary Clinton. We have seen polling. We've seen several polls now from that congressional district that show Joe Biden running competitively with Donald Trump. So I think one thing to keep in mind here, we have spent four years talking about the Trump base, the Trump voters, blue collar whites, non-college white. Remember, the day after the election in 2016, we had a different term for those voters. We called them Obama, Obama, Trump voters. These are voters in a lot of cases who went for Obama in 2008, even stuck with Obama in 2012 and flipped to Donald Trump in 2016. That's why he was winning a state like Iowa. That's why he was pulling off Wisconsin, Michigan. The Obama part of that equation, in the polling at least, is coming back into the mix. Biden is drawing support now. It's starting to look a little bit more for the Democrats like 2012 than 2016. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.